The first step in mounting the Respire series is going to be to get the back plate into place and just put it on the back of the motherboard, line up the mounting holes, and four screws will go through. Uh, important to note that there are three sets of lineup cutouts in the back plate itself. Make sure you do have it lined up correctly. Four screws go right through into the motherboard cavity. I should say the main cavity of the case. And your back plate is in place. As the screws turn, they will lock into place. With the back plate in place, you can see we've got the four screws coming through. Next, I'm going to cap them with four rubber spacers. You can see. Now these are not only going to act as spacers, but they are also going to hold the screws in place while we work. And they will just slide right on and into place. And that's going to give us a little bit firmer of a mount for the screws, as well as, as I say, act as a spacer for the retention brackets. Next, we're going to take the retention brackets, and they're going to go into place as well. And make sure your orientation is proper. We're going to want to do, you can do top to bottom or um, front to rear flow. For front to rear flow, we're going to want to mount them. on the two sides. Then four thumb screws. We'll secure them into place. And you're going to want to give them a good snug turn. They will have a little spring to them because of the rubber spacers that are underneath. and your mounting kit is in place. Whenever I'm using direct contact, I've applied the thermal interface material. I like to apply to the heat pipe itself in thin strips along the heat pipes. Of course, this is debatable and has been debated many times. But um, applied the thermal interface material, so I'm going to take the crossbar and it will snap into place across the base and will fit and fall right onto the two mounting screws and the two mounting nuts will then thread through the center bracket and onto the bolts from the mounting plate itself. Once you've got the nuts started, you're going to want to go in and tighten them all the way until they stop. It is a high pressure mount, so it's probably going to be a little bit tighter than you think it's going to be, but the nuts do have a stop point, and just tighten them until you reach it. Obviously going back and forth between the two until you have the unit in place and tight. Final step. I'm going to click the fan into place and fan will get wired to fan uh, CPU fan header on your motherboard. 
Uh, as you can see, the T20 is a very, very small cooler. It takes up almost no room in the case. does not interfere with the RAM slots in any way, shape, or form. Uh, height is not a problem in a full tower or most mid-tower cases. And as I say, very slim. doesn't impede on other components at all. In the case, the T40 obviously takes up a little bit more room. But taking a look, uh, the fan actually lines up just off of the first uh, memory slot. Uh, some tall RAM is going to fit, particularly if the, ra the uh, heatsink on the RAM tapers. Uh, for example, Patriot Viper Extreme or uh, Viper 3 will actually fit in the first slot. Um, I don't know about Corsair Vengeance or um, any of the G-Skill RAM, but I did try the uh, Patriot RAM and it does actually work in the first slot. But either way, standard height RAM, all four slots naturally. These three completely unimpeded and really nice looking install in the case, especially for a lower price cooler. Very easy install on the T20 and the T40 and a very solid install.